Des and usually just a t-shirt. The 1994 debut solo album of Red Hot Chili Peppers guitarist John Vachante is unique for a variety of reasons. The erratic, experimental, and stripped-back style of the album, combined with John's intense personal touch, creates an unforgettable sound. understand why the album sounds like this, some context is required. As the Red Hot Chili Peppers shot into stardom, John became disillusioned. As Anthony Kiedis quotes him as having said, We're too popular. I don't need to be at this level of success. I would just be proud to be playing this music in clubs like you guys were doing two years ago. John is, is such a pure artist. Um, he doesn't care about the reward. He doesn't care about... Uh any of the things that come with rock stardom or being in a band or any of the things that someone might think would be the fringe benefits of being in a band, um, those things are absolutely no concern to him. His, his, he just lives for the process of, of making music and for the process of surrendering his body and his soul to, to the spirits, you know, and, and uh, letting music flow through him. It's all he wants to do. John's apathy towards the band's newfound success is most apparent in their now infamous performance of Under the Bridge on Saturday Night Live, in which he seems to be intentionally sabotaging it. This stare between a slouched over and possibly heroin affected John and a disdainful Anthony really says everything about the state of the band at the time. John quit a few months later. It was around this time that John became severely addicted to heroin, something that would profoundly influence the sound of Neandre Ledez and usually just a t-shirt. Okay, you want me to say something soulful? Yeah. Drugs, I'm a junkie and I love shooting up and, I'm, and that, that means I'm self-destructive and, you know, is that good enough? <laughs> I don't know, did you feel it was a true statement or? Yeah. Oh. Okay, but now you just said you're, you're shooting up, you're using heroin, I mean, what about that? That's, that's something pretty heavy, isn't it? I, people say so. I, I don't know what that means, really. Like, I don't think of it as being any sort of naughty thing or anything. Uh, what does it mean to you? It's just a way of uh, making sure you stay in touch with beauty instead of letting the ugliness of the world corrupt your, your soul. John's physical decline is evident here from the abscesses on his arms that would almost lead to amputation, to his ghoulish appearance and bizarre mannerisms. He looks like he's on the verge of death and not in a good place mentally. And, and you, you don't care if that destroys your body or doesn't it? I don't it doesn't know. destroy my body. I no. feel great. If I didn't feel great, I'd change the way I live. I'd start running or something. Mm. I'd feel great. I have lots of energy. I'm writing all the time, writing music all the time developing, you know, developing my brain, uh, widening my appreciation of art of all kinds, and being a nicer person, always working on being a nicer person. It's shocking how candid this entire interview is, from John openly admitting to using heroin, to filming in his decrepit home, to him clearly being on something. There's almost no separation between John's harrowing state and the audience, something that carries over into the album. Oh, 
Typically, when artists get addicted to hard drugs, they drop out of the public spotlight or simply die. It's rare that we get to hear music from inside the belly of that beast, and especially in a manner as open as this. Usually, it's filtered through a producer or fellow band members or the sterile world of the studio. The first half of Neandre Ladez and usually just a t-shirt was recorded entirely by John in his living room. Because John was able to control every aspect of the album, including whether or not he was on heroin or other substances, Neandre is able to achieve an intense personal fusion that few albums are able to replicate. There's no need to recreate the pain of the experience, because it's clear that he's in the midst of living it. No, I mean, I don't think any guitar player sounds like any other guitar player. To me, um, when you hear the sound of a guitar, you hear that person's nervous system, that person's skin, that person's flesh, that person's um, psyche. I, I, I just feel like everything in a person comes through in their guitar, and that's why, like, you can hear it's Mark Boland from him playing one note, you know? He's not, like, he's not like Jimi Hendrix or Jimmy Page, nevertheless, like, it's every bit as identifiable, you know? If a guitar can convey the sound of a person's skin, flesh, and nervous system, then Neandre Ledez sounds exactly like John appears in this interview. His soul seems to haunt the album in an ethereal way, and it's hard to convey how John does this, but it's almost like he uses his guitar as a portal into his subconscious. It's, it's like I'm in the fourth dimension, and somebody's asking me to describe it verbally and that's what the fourth dimension is all about is no words no symbols no images all pure real energy and vibrations john uses his guitar and voice in a way that is almost impossible to convey the emotional weight of in words or short snippets and there's no clear way to analyze the album in a neat manner probably because it's meant to be experienced above all else. The lyrics are almost entirely stream of consciousness, often following narratives that fade into one another like dreams. What's so odd about this is that Neandre is a disturbingly intimate album with an artist at his lowest point, but whatever realizations John is coming to are so intangible and otherworldly that their meaning is mostly lost on us. Usually just a t-shirt was recorded in the order that it appears um, on the record, so uh, the, the earliest things on it were recorded during you know during the writing process of blood sugar and the last things recorded on it were just before i quit the band um and i always uh i think it's interesting in that you can you can hear the um the decline that i was going on inside 
uh, I think that those last two songs on it are the best songs on the record. But at the same time, uh, you know, it's very sad because um, I, 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 I hear when I hear it that it sounds like a person falling apart or it sounds like somebody about to kill themselves or something. It, 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 uh, those songs for, are um, sad for the same reason that they're good. So um, I'm, I'm proud that I went through it and I'm proud that, uh, that those songs are what they are. Neandra Ledez, and usually just a t-shirt, manages to capture the feeling of death and disintegration in such a real and honest way. As it transitions from the first half to the second, its already raw sound becomes unbridled and chaotic, as you can clearly hear John's suffering becoming more pronounced. He's managed to capture a really unique piece of intensely human art, and one that could only come from him in this time. And that's the devastating thing, is that John can never come back to this period in his life, but I think it's also where he made his best art. I love many of his other solo records, but they just can't manage to top the raw intensity of Neandra. I think he's managed to capture something essential and intangible, and you'll either connect with that or you won't. There's not that much good music around nowadays. And that was how my friends convinced me. It's like, there's, not, there's no good music around really now. So, like the kids are, even though they're excited about the music that's out, I just think they're settling for something that doesn't have the same vibe as, like, Da Vinci. Like, to me, the really good music, like Jane's Addiction and Jimi Hendrix and, and, uh, you know, just things of that caliber has the same vibe as Da Vinci in my head. Like there's something in it that ties together all artists from all times. Mm -hmm. And uh, no bands around now really have it, you know, and this music does, so I've released it. Rise up, do you have a noose that seemed to me defeat you? 